This is the beginning of test two. I am testing the ScanSnap app for the Fujitsu scanner with some old contact postcards that had been mailed to us years ago, and I just wanted to keep in an Evernote. Um, the problem is they're different sizes, and they have labels on them, and I've actually put some more labels on, and I've noticed in the past that the scanner sometimes can be sensitive to thicknesses, and we'll stop at that point. It doesn't get jammed very often, but we'll stop. So I wanted to test doing multi-sizes as well as multi-thicknesses all together in one scan, see if it works, see if it has any problems, and I thought I could do this little demonstration video while I did it. So I have these in there already, and they're oriented the way that I want them to be oriented. Biggest things in first, and the part that I want to be the front, I put facing backwards and upside down. So those things closest to the back are going to come out and be the front. I have noticed sometimes things will get jammed, and I try to, when I put things in, then use these side guides just to kind of make sure that the biggest one. There are two ways you can start the scan, either pressing the blue button on the machine itself or on the app. I'm going to press it on the machine. Wow, had no problems at all. So um, one thing I should point out is I'm videotaping this myself as I do it. So it might be a little shaky because I'm trying to hold my phone in one hand and then like demonstrate things with my other hand. Beginning test two, I'm going to start it from the app this time. And I just, I just press the scan button. Impressive. So I had no problem at all with multiple thicknesses versus various sizes. This thing is amazing. So let's look at what we just scanned in. That would be that one. I can rename it if I would like by tapping on that, entering a name. Actually, one thing I should have shown you in settings I named it beforehand. So if you go into settings, profile, in settings is also where you change things like duplex to simplex, whether or not you want color, whether or not you want this scanned as a JPEG versus a PDF. Um, I usually only set this once and then just kind of leave it because it will auto detect and scan things the way that you have it set up and kind of just, it gets to know your preferences and I rarely change those things. I just go in and give it a name basically. So one thing I wanted to show you was how you actually would share things to Evernote because that is primarily what I use it for. Um, you can do it, do it two ways, you can do it here and use open in and then whatever name you gave it on the front end is the name that's going to appear here that's fine I'm gonna leave that um, it will put it in the last folder that you put something into using this app which is great so just tap save and now it's going to my Evernote folder the other way is again with the three dots So get out of settings, go back to where we were, which is the document. You can rename it down here. You go through it page by page, make sure everything is in the correct orientation that you want. It is, but let's just say it wasn't. I would hit edit and I can flip it around. 
around. And then when you've got all that done, I was doing cancel instead of done because it didn't really change anything. So to share this, I can email it or I can open it in just a ton of different apps. Um, Evernote is just one of many apps that you can open this in as either a PDF or a JPEG depending on how you scanned it. Um, you can also add it to iCloud Drive, but the ScanSnap Snap app itself now will allow you to keep your documents in iCloud, which is awesome. Um, so usually what I do is I put it in Evernote and then oftentimes I email it to somebody. So this is how you email it now. This is the document I'm talking about. You tap on the three dots here and there is the email. I decided to do one more test with a bunch of things that I was going to file away and I already had stapled things together and so I had to take all the staples out and I did it in kind of a crummy way. So when I took them out there's kind of like bumps in the cardboard where I took them out. So this test is going to be really definitive for me. In the past with the older software Fujitsu would have had some problems with this. There's all different sizes, all different thicknesses, all mixed together because I had business cards with bigger cards that were stapled together. I don't have my starting with big going to small up at the top um, kind of order that I would normally follow. I just have things in the order that I want them to be. And like I said, they're all different and I am, I'll be really surprised if this just flows through smoothly because my scanner is at least three years old and it used to have more problems with this, so that tells me that Fujitsu is updating how the scanner functions as much as it is updating the functionality of the apps, like doing things like adding iCloud to it and stuff. So let's get started and give this one a shot. Keep your fingers crossed. There can be a couple of kind of glitchy things with ScanSnap's iOS app in terms of connecting to the network. Oh, my iPad's not on the network. Okay, well that would be because I took some videos and some photographs. And stupid iCloud photo backup is so aggressive that it backs things up immediately and usurps all of our bandwidth and all my devices get kicked off of our network. I actually have an article about that tells you how to fix that, temporarily anyway, but just put it in airplane mode. So I have to get back on the network. Okay, I'm back on the network. It is searching for it now. It's important to know too, if you have like a guest network, um, that you need to have Wi-Fi support device is not found. Okay, this is a little bit of a glitch in the software. So I'm glad that this happened. I can't remember how I got around it, but back to what I was saying earlier, you need, if you have two Wi-Fi networks, to make sure that the network you set the scanner up on is the same network that your mobile device is on when you try and connect to it. So this is how you get around that. When you're first setting it up, you can have this problem a lot too. Um, you basically hit later, and then you see that it is actually connected. So. It's telling you that it's not working, but in fact, it actually did work. Okay, on to test two, once again. Actually, test three. Keep your fingers crossed. Wow, amazing. Okay, three years after I bought my scanner, I love it even more than I did the day I bought it. automatically turns on, very easy. You would tap on settings, 
and go to Setup Wizard and tap your scanner to connect. Usually what happens here is it says it's searching for it, it doesn't find it, and I've been through this a bunch of times. So right now it's telling me it's not finding it. One reason it might not find it would be if you're too far away from it. You need to be in the same room. I would say maybe 25 feet is about the maximum distance. Another reason would be if you have two Wi-Fi's, you need to be connected to the Wi-Fi that your scanner is connected to, and you set that when you first set up the scanner, which is done by plugging it into your computer. So I know that, well actually I don't know. Let me just check and see. Make sure I'm connected to the correct network, and I am. So I'm gonna go back, and I know that it should work. So rather than hitting retry, which I know from past experience, is just a continuous loop of telling me it doesn't work, I just hit later. And voila! It's